Hey everyone, AJ here. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see how Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Premiere Rush work on the Surface Pro X. The Pro X I have in front of me has an SQ1 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and is running the Windows Insider build 21277. Before we get into testing Premiere Pro and Premiere Rush on the Pro X, I just want to talk to you real quickly about how to install the Adobe Suite on the Pro X right now. Firstly, you're going to need to be on the latest Windows Insider build on the Pro X, so please understand the risk of this before you move forward. If or when you do decide to install the latest Insider build on your Pro, you can go onto the Adobe website, download and install Creative Cloud, but once it's installed, you're not going to see any programs that it's going to let you run on your Pro X. And if you go onto the Adobe website and try to run them directly, those executables, they're not gonna work either. What you're gonna need to do is open up a chat session in Creative Cloud, let the Adobe support person know all the programs you wanna run, and they'll give you an individual download link to each of those programs. I'd like to thank Jan for this tip, and he also recommended downloading the 2019 and not the 2020 versions of the programs you're after because 2020 doesn't seem to work well just yet on the Pro X. The downloads are a couple of gigs, but once they've downloaded, right click, extract the files, and then just let them run. Those are the basic steps, but it is honestly a little bit fiddly to get it running properly on the Pro X. So if you wanna see a video of exactly how to install Adobe Creative Cloud on the Pro X right now, let me know and I'll be more than happy to make it for you. But anyway, enough with how to install it. Let's actually see how the apps perform on the Pro X. So if I hit the start button here and scroll down, you see I've got a little folder that says Adobe, and you can see we've got Adobe Creative Cloud, Adobe Photoshop Beta, which actually is the ARM 64-bit version, Adobe Premiere Rush, and Adobe Premiere Pro installed on here. The first app we're gonna run is Adobe Premiere Rush because I expect this to be a smaller, lighter version of video editing software compared to Premiere Pro. You can see it launches straight away, and here it says, 2019, not the 2020 version of Premiere Rush, but it loads and this to me is really exciting because it just runs as if it's not running emulation, it just opens up. Of course, when we're met with this screen, it takes a couple of seconds to load. You can see we've got the demo video, a practice run that I was running before, and we're gonna select on create new project, and we're gonna call this project 1080p intro rush. We're just gonna jump over to a folder I have called Adobe, and we're gonna grab this 1080p video footage here. It's four and a half minutes long, and then we're just gonna hit create, and this is gonna import it into Adobe Premiere Rush. Preparing media takes about 10 seconds or so to get this file loaded in, and as soon as it loads in, you'll see that we're ready to work. It'll rescale for a second, and then we'll be good. So the first thing I wanna show you is the scrubbing on Premiere Rush. So I'm gonna grab the slider here and we're gonna run through and see how smooth it actually scrubs the video. And when we're hitting the space bar, it just starts playing instantaneously. I was really surprised at how smooth this was. Of course, this video is about four and a half minutes long. My intros definitely, I don't want them to be that long. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get, grab the scissors here and we're gonna split this video into a few different sections. So it's S, S, S. Again, as I'm splitting and chopping this video up, it's really quick, very instantaneous. Control Z and you'll see again, we're just undoing what we've done. Now we're redoing it and it's really quite quick. So again, I'm really impressed with how it's handling the software right now. I'm just gonna hit S and we're gonna just hit delete key and we're gonna delete the intro or the start where I walk over to the table here. And just so you know, this isn't how I edit my videos. I'm just showing you how well the Pro X handles Premiere Rush and 1080p video editing. I'm just gonna delete this random bit in the middle here. We're gonna jump over to the start of the clip and let's actually open up with a title. So we've selected title, it'll take a second or so to load and then a few seconds later, it will populate with all the tiles that we have titles that we have. Let's just grab a very simple one. Let's go this basic lower title, basic lower third. Drop it here. It's gonna load in. And now we're just gonna double click and give it a title. We're gonna call this 1080p. Down the bottom, double click again, Surface Pro X. What I was talking about in one of my early videos was when apps are running in emulation, there's sometimes a delay between the keyboard and the input on the screen, but I'm not noticing that in Premiere Rush at all. It's just, as I type, it's instantaneously appearing on the screen here. So again, it doesn't feel like it's running in emulation at all. Let's jump over to the second scene here and let's actually add in a transition. 
or the first I should say, and let's just select a dip to black transition and see if there's any lag as it plays that. So you saw there, I'll play it back one more time, that as it ends one clip and moves to the next, there is no lag, there's no delay. It just puts in that, that simple transition, it dips to black, and we know we're jumping from one to the other. The other thing that can happen is that when you have titles on your screen, you can have a delay when, when that title appears. So let's actually play and see how the title appears. Again, there's no lag there, it just appears, and the video continues running as smoothly as ever. Let's jump back to the second scene here and let's jump over to the color correction. And there's a couple of built-in presets here and I'm just gonna click through to show you how fast Premiere Rush jumps from scene to scene. And you can see as we click through, you know, almost instantaneously, we're editing that video as well. Let's jump over to SL Fuji, scroll over to where it says edit and let's make a few more edits to this filter. Let's bring that exposure down a little bit Let's increase that contrast. Same with the highlights. So what we've done is we've trimmed the video, we've added a title, we've added a transition, and we've done a few color corrections to this video. I want this video to be about one and a half to two minutes. See here it's three minutes 29. Again, that's still too long for an intro, so I'm just gonna select these, gonna delete, and now have an intro that is two minutes, 16 seconds, and this is all 1080p. What I've seen is that Premiere Rush is really smooth when handling 1080p video footage, and in terms of the basic edits that it lets you do, it handles it without any issues. So what we're gonna do now is export this and see how quickly it takes for this um, to export into a 1080p video file. The estimated file size is 520 megs, it's half a gig essentially. If we looked at the advanced settings, it's gonna be in 1080p full HD at 50 frames a second, and it's gonna be in high quality. And we're just gonna hit export, see how long it takes for this thing to export a two minute, 16 second video. All right, so the render is complete. Let's go view in export. And if we go into the properties, we can see it's half a gig file. We started the render at 5.16 and it finished at 5.34. So it took about 20, it took about 18 minutes for Premiere Rush to export two minutes of 1080p video footage. So that definitely isn't the fastest time to export a video, but I hope as the software emulation improves, there is better synchronicity and just better utilization of the CPU and the GPU on the Pro X. And hopefully in future videos, we see that export time is substantially decreased. But for now, what we see here is that we're able to easily edit and export a video in Premiere Rush. And we can also see that there are some improvements to be made. All right, so what we're gonna do now is hit OK and we're gonna jump over to Adobe Premiere Pro 2019, and we're gonna do a very similar thing by editing, you can see here Premiere Pro 2019, and we're gonna edit the same 1080p video file in Premiere Pro, just to see how Premiere Pro performs on the Surface Pro X here. You can see in terms of load up speed, it opens quite quickly. I'm actually gonna jump over to Rush and close this out. Same with our Task Manager. And you can see I've got a few videos here that I was practicing on before, but we're gonna start from a brand new project. And we're gonna call this Premiere Pro 1080p intro. We're gonna keep all the settings as standard here and we're just gonna hit okay. You notice that there is a bit more of a lag with Premiere Pro as we filter through the program. I'm just gonna jump over to our folder here and I'm gonna grab that same 1080p video, pull it across and drop it into Premiere Pro. The import you'll see is actually faster than what we saw in Premiere Rush. You can see it's that same 4 minute 34 1080p file and we're gonna do very similar video edits. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the scrubbing, so how smoothly it can play back. Again, it's a 1080p file, not a 4K video. We hit that space bar and it plays or it pauses the video and it's all instantaneous. You can't actually tell that this is running an emulation and I'll be more than happy to work with the Pro X and Premiere Pro if this is how it performs when I'm editing all my videos. 
The next thing we did was actually cut the one video into a couple of different sections. Again, it's four minutes 34 for an introduction. We're gonna cut that down to about two minutes here. So we're gonna grab the blade and I'm just gonna make some incisions, if you will, across the video. Again, instantaneous, but if I press Control Z, we undo those without a problem. So let's put them back in. Again, running really quite smoothly. Let's actually jump over and let's go into our graphics section. You see, when we select on a new tab at the top, it takes a little bit for it to, to render and to load. And then we're gonna jump over to the My Templates section and it's gonna show us all the introductions that we can have. Let's find, again, a nice simple one, just like this one, basic lower third. Let's grab that, put it into the timeline. It takes a second to load. Let's double click and call this 1080p. Pro X Premiere. There's no lag between me typing the keys and them appearing on the screen here. So again, it feels really quite smooth. Let's jump back for a second and see if there's any delay, which I don't think there will be as that little title appears. Let's hit play. It pops up. Again, it's still quite smooth. If we jump over to the second section here, we're actually gonna put a transition in between the two. So let's go over to the effects. Again, it'll take a few seconds for it to load. And then we're just gonna look at our video transitions and we're just gonna get something like a dissolve. And we're gonna have the same thing, but we're gonna go dip to white this time and drop it in. You can see drag and drop straight into the middle. Again, you saw it flash that dip to white appeared and there is no delay in the playback. So again, working with Premiere Pro is really quite smooth. So now let's jump over into the color correction and let's actually play around with the color correction here. So we're on the second scene. We're gonna grab the line here and we're just gonna make some slight adjustments. And you see, as soon as I, I let go of that mouse, those color corrections appear. It is a little, little bit laggy, but totally workable. Let's scroll down a little bit. Let's change the hue and the saturation, move them up a little bit. Move this one down just a bit. And maybe we just add a little bit more of a transition here or a little bit more of an effect. Oh, I don't like that. So let's just go Control Z, Control Z. This isn't editing the video for publishing. This is just to show you how smoothly Premiere Pro runs on the Surface Pro X. We're gonna grab the M3 here. We're just gonna hit delete. And now this video is two minutes and 16 seconds long. And what we've done is we've added a title, we've added a transition, and we've also added some color correction to the film here. Overall, it seems to be running quite well, quite smooth, and I can do a lot of my basic video editing on here in Premiere Pro. And keep in mind, this is a 1080p file, not 4K. So now that I'm happy with that, we're just gonna go ahead, file, scroll down, we're gonna hit export, and we're gonna export the media. We're gonna leave it as a H.264 format. Everything else is gonna stay the same. It's gonna be a 1920 by 1080p full HD video at 50 frames a second. You can see the estimated file size is 167 megs. So let's hit export. So you can see here, even by the estimated time, three minutes, 20 seconds, it's already at 3%. So in terms of comparing the export and file size of Premiere Pro versus Premiere Rush, if we right click and look at the properties of Premiere Rush, this one here is about 520 megs and it took 18 minutes to export. And if we right click and look at the properties of Premiere Pro, this one only took nine minutes to export and the file size is 168 megs. So there's a big discrepancy between Premiere Pro and Premiere Rush in terms of file size and export time. I don't use either program all that much. So there might've been some settings that were different between the two. So what are the takeaways from today's video? Well, the first one is the fact that we're able to run Adobe software on the Surface Pro X. We successfully ran and installed Adobe Premiere Pro and Premiere Rush in the Pro X here. We were able to edit and export footage in 1080p and I was really surprised at how well both programs handled the footage. Were we able to edit and export in 4K? Unfortunately not. I was unable to get any 4K footage to successfully load on either program, but that's okay because this is still relatively new developer software that's allowing 64-bit emulation. And I'm really hopeful that as the software matures, we're gonna get more functionality like 4K video editing on the Pro X and other Windows ARM devices. 
I think though the big takeaway from today's video is the advancements being made with ARM processors in Windows 10. We're now successfully running 64-bit apps on ARM processors, and this has me really excited as to the future of Windows 10 on ARM. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and what other apps you want to see running on the Pro X here. That's all from me for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.